Welcome back to another episode of A Moment in Crime. With the recent release of the final report into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, I thought it was timely to take a look back at Regina's longest recorded case of a missing woman. It was 35 years ago this year that anyone saw Patricia May Favel. Just 18 years old, she disappeared from Regina's downtown and has never been seen again. Not long after I started working here at the Leader Post, I got digging around in the archives and I found this old black and white photo. It showed a woman holding her baby boy, um, posing proudly with her child. And I was intrigued by it, but even more so when I started digging into the backstory of that photo. From all accounts, Patricia Favel, or Patsy as she was known to her friends and family, adored her little boy Cody. And despite living in poverty as a single mom, she managed to scrape together $100 uh, when Cody was about nine months old. And she bundled him up and she goes down to a photo studio and she poses there with her son. And I think that that picture just spoke volumes about her love for her child. Just four days after Cody turned one years old, Patsy disappeared from his life. She disappeared from the streets of Regina on September 30th, 1984. When a Leader Post reporter first wrote about Patsy's disappearance, there was speculation by some that maybe she had just left, you know, seeking a, a better start and, and to start over in life. But for people who knew her and, and knew of her love for Cody, they knew that she wouldn't willingly leave her little boy behind. Unfortunately, like too many impoverished women, Patsy had turned to survival sex work on occasion to make ends meet. The detail is important only because it might shed some light on who saw her last and know what happened to her. It's not to diminish who she was, that she was valued, and that she was loved by her family. Patsy was last seen getting into a vehicle around 12th Avenue and Olsler Street that evening, just about a couple blocks from the police station. Uh, when the Leader Post first reported on her case, three women uh, said that they had seen her that night, and one of the women believed she had gotten into the same vehicle earlier in the evening. She described uh, an Asian man and that he was driving a vehicle that had a Chinese pagoda hanging in the rear view mirror and that he liked to carry his money in a brown attache case. When I wrote about Patsy's case on the 25th anniversary, I talked to a cold case investigator about those details that that woman had shared back in 1984. Uh, he said, like so many what ifs and maybes in a, in a cold case, they couldn't be sure all those details were correct, but what was clear was the woman in 1984 who spoke to the Leader Post was very clear about the man that she had gotten into a vehicle with and thought that Patsy had gotten into that same car. In 2009, I had an opportunity to spend some time with Patsy's mom, Alice, at her home on a First Nation. And 
Alice talked about uh, having been a residential school survivor and some of the generational impacts of that time on her life, her own struggles with poverty, and I think her frustration that she couldn't keep her children from harm. Uh, she described Patsy as being sort of a, a quiet child. She was the baby of the family and uh, Patsy liked to read books. Um, but as she grew older, uh, she followed an older sister to Regina and into the city. And unfortunately there, she, she fell into some problems and amongst them was, was an addiction to a, a street drug known as Talwin that really created havoc amongst communities in Regina in the 1980s and 90s. Like many moms of missing persons, Alice spent countless hours searching for her little girl. And in the time that she spent searching, she heard stories from people about what might have happened to Patsy. One of the terrible stories that she heard was that her daughter was shot to death by two men. And I, I know in talking to Alice, uh, she had nightmares that, that that story gripped her. There was a certain basis for those fears as there is now about the possibilities that can happen on the street. Just three years before Patsy disappeared, another young Regina woman was taken outside the city and killed by two men. And a year before Patsy disappeared, a young Regina woman uh, had disappeared from the downtown and her remains were later found burned on the outskirts of the city. And so you can see how all those things would have played on Alice's mind in the search for her daughter. About a week before Patsy had disappeared. She had bleached her brown hair blonde and in retrospect her, her mother always wondered if it was perhaps to disguise herself from someone who might have been after her or whether it was uh, simply to make herself more visible to the men who might seek out her company. Whatever the story, uh, Alice always clung to hope that one day she would finally find out what happened to her daughter. Unfortunately, uh, Alice passed away in 2012, and the mystery of what became of Patsy uh, is still unknown to this day. As I looked back on my files about Patsy Favel, I also was uh, at the same time reading through the national inquiry report and I came across a quote from one of the presenters which I thought was very fitting to Patsy's case and it said we must never lose sight of the fact that every life has value.